Hello everybody, my name is Storm here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online. In the last episode, we worked on running quests in the western half of the Mordona map, basically running some errands for side quests and working on our main storyline, which are preparations for the infiltration of Castrum Sentry. Uh, we learned how to do an Imperial Salute, and we acquired um, some Imperial uniforms to function as disguises. Now, the uniforms are damaged because we, you know, took them off the bodies of people we killed. So, uh, we have to get them repaired. So, that's one of the things we're going to be doing next. But, before we do that, we have another side quest uh, right over here, right outside of Mordona. So, we're going to go ahead and work on that. Um, one of the NPCs around here wants us to uh, recover some items from the debris from the downed Imperial airship that's in the middle of the lake. To see if we find any useful salvage. Um, oh, we need to bring our chocobo out. There we go. Oh, there's Crystal Tower shining in the background. Um, and in the middle of the lake, probably can barely see it, is the downed Imperial airship. All right, here are chunks of it. We need to collect eight pieces. Find the spots first. Oh, there we go. Oh, fate. Okay, fortunately, I don't think. Yeah, fate guys are over there. I'm not going to worry about it too much. There are some gigas in the area. There's six, so there's two more spots. Hmm. Let's hop on our chocobo and see if we can locate them. Ah, there's one over here. Ah, there's both of them. Actually, I don't know if you guys are able to see it or not. There it is. Simple enough. But it doesn't look like that's everything, because it didn't turn green, which means it isn't done. Alright, so let's bring those whole fragments back to Wandering Breeze to be evaluated. Oh, Wandering Breeze is over in St. Coinax. Fine, right, 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 okay. Gigas really close to the road back there. Alright, Wandering Breeze. Let's uh, chat with him. Good evening to you. Is there something you require? Uh, we have some airship hull parts. Ah, you wanted to know what these are? Well, well, so there is still meat left to pick off the bone. This is made of cermet, a Garlean alloy. Greatly resistant, some might say impervious, to cannon fire, and beyond our capacity to create. If we could produce our own, there would be cermet pouring out of every metalworks in every city, 
or mayhap if we knew what metals sired this alloy, we could use the knowledge in other ways. Are you not wanting us to study these then? Just information? Ah, uh, let me guess. Gwolgeim. Hear the pieces back and tell her again that the sons are not here to provide free appraisals. Okay. Report back to Gwolgeim. Just teleport back to Ravenous Toll. 50 gil. No big deal. Talk to her, let her know what Wandering Breeze had to say. Well, is it to be Magitek or Marzipan? Did you find anything good? Here we go. Well, well, lassie, all Garlean Sermit, huh? That will fetch something high, wide, and handsome from a traitor. What? They can change the tide of war? Your problem, lass, is that you think too much. These are worth a good bit of gill, and the only tide you should worry about is the tide of ale you can summon with your share of it. But you're right about something. I should learn more about these little loys, so I don't have to go to the sun's hat in hand. Here, that's your share? Remember what I said about ale. If I find more of those, these sermon pieces, who knows? Maybe I'll be able to pay back Wandering Breeze what I owe in a couple of moons. Seventeen hundred eighty-two gil. I don't know how much ale that can buy. All right, um, we need to head to the Weavers Guild to get the uniforms repaired. So let's head over to Thanalan and Olda, and we'll teleport over there, which is one of our free teleports. to the Weaver's Guild, which will use the Ethernet network to head to the Weaver's Guild. And we need to talk to Aethelwine. Ah. There he is. Ah, you must be the adventurer, Yama Yatsuruki. Welcome, welcome. My lord Sark Malark sent word that you would be along. So what garments are these that require attention? Um, some imperial uniforms. Oh my. Well, I am certain you have your reasons and I shan't question them. Nor do you, nor do you need fear that I will spread gossip. My lord Sark Malark is one of our very best clients, though these days I'm told he spends more time roaming the land as an adventurer. Far be it from me to question my lord's tastes, but I struggle to understand why a man of his fabulous wealth would forsake the comforts of his estate for a life of danger and hardship. And the repairs are done. I was instructed to prioritize swiftness, and so I did. While I can't vouch for the protective capacity of the garments, they certainly looked the part, even if I do say so myself. Payment? Never you mind that. Sending my regards to my lord Sark Malark will be payment enough. Alright. So. Uniform is repaired. Now we need to head to... The Armorer's Guild, which is in Limsa Lamensa, which the easiest way for us to get there is to return, because it still is our home point.
All right. So we're heading to the Armorer's Guild, which is where in the city? Blacksmith's Guild, Armorer's Guild. So it looks like that the closest Aethernet is going to be the Ath Castle. for Hananza. Ah. And uh, there she is. Yamiya Tsurugi, I have been expecting you. Sark Malak gives me to understand you come on his behalf with unusual helms. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, very unusual indeed. Though no more outlandish in order than I have come to expect from the merchant prince turned adventurer. Your awkward starring tells me I said something improper. Oh, staring. Not starring. Oh, Sark did not mention his background to you? That was likely his intent. But I suppose there's no help for it now, but to tell you the whole story. Sark Malark is the son of a successful Alden merchant. Though still tender in years, he has an eye for profit and has made millions in his own right. Having achieved thus, he turned his attention toward his true passion, adventuring, and left the management of his fortune to trusted aids. The helms are ready. With a little more time, I could have achieved far higher quality finish, but I was given to understand that you are in some haste. These should serve your needs well enough. Lest you wonder about payment, Sark Malark has already settled the bill. Do pass along my regards when next you see him. All right. So there we go. Back to Mordona. Talk to Sark Malark again. He was apparently extraordinarily wealthy. Probably should have gone up there. All right. Have you had the uniforms and helms repaired? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, these will serve beautifully. Both Aethelwine and Hananza never fail to impress. The quality of these repairs would fool even Le a Legatus. Thus equipped, you should not have any trouble blending in amongst Imperial forces. Lest you fear that the Garleans might detect your foreignness, foreigners in fact form the greater part of the Garlean invasion force in Eorzea. You see, when the Empire subjugates new territory, it assimilates the people of that land into its armed forces. In turn, these conscripts, uh, conscripted forces are sent to subjugate faraway lands. In this way, Garlemald nips rebellion in the bud and expands its territory in one fell stroke. With that, my part in your mission is done. I am full glad to have been of assistance to your cause. Hmm, why would I, a wealthy merchant, wish to help you? I know not where you heard such a tale, but believe me when I say I am but n another humble adventurer. One who desires only to act in the best interests of the realm. A likely story. Alright then. Ah, Glomont has the next quest. 
Glamont has finally devised a plan to appropriate a suit of Magitek armor. Good work getting them Imperial duds. You'll be pleased to hear I ain't been idle myself. It took me long enough, but I finally hatched a plan to get us a suit of Magitek armor. Now, from what I've seen, Kashim Sentry deploys a Reaper for most of its patrols. Trouble is, the patrols themselves are irregular, meaning random routes and random deployments, and hardly any of them come anywhere near Revenant's Toll. So hoping to coax the Imperials out of their shells, I took the liberty of feeding them a bit of the old false intelligence. Told them insurgents had designs on their stronghold. Taint far from the truth, now I come to think of it. Any road, we should start seeing more patrols than we have up until now. What you need do need to do is approach one of these patrols dressed up in your shiny tin suit and alert them to the enemy's presence. Having done that, you want to lure them as near Revenant's Toll as you can. Like as not though, they'll be wary of venturing far from their own walls. If they do need a bit of extra encouragement, use this smoke signal here, filched fresh from an Imperial Scout. They'll come running when they see that. And when the cavalry arrives, you hit them hard and make off with their Reaper. Simple as that. If I ain't mistaken, there's a patrol sweep in the perimeter right now, so run along, eh? And don't forget to salute. Right, right, right. We need the Imperial salute. Uh, let's see. Um. Imperial salute. Here we are. Put that on the bar for ease of access. Greet the Imperial Centurion with an Imperial Salute. Do I need to be wearing my... Imperial get up here? Even though I only have like two pieces of it? Gear set list. Okay, yeah. Alright, yeah, I'll wear the uniform just in case. We can always swap back. the mud puppies and there is our Imperial patrol well let's swap back because I'm probably gonna need to kill that mud puppy Now let me just try it without the without the stuff equipped. All right, Imperial Centurion. I'll do my little salute here. One of our covert operatives, are you? Carry on, soldier. Hmm. Insurgents gathering to the east, you say? Judging by your description, they are well beyond the perimeter. But I will not have it said that I was remiss. You return to the scene and keep an eye on those insurgents. Should aught go awry, use your smoke signal to call us. All right, so yes, we don't actually need to wear the uniform just yet. Use the Imperial smoke signal at the specified location. All right, let's 
see if I can slip through here without getting some undue attention from local wildlife. Ah, we're going to do it up on top of the rock formation. Because this rock formation is also useful for disrupting their communications, as we determined previously. Alright, here we are. It looks like it's going to be an instance Imperial Smoke Signal. Yep. Proceed. I hope you didn't mind my joining. Seeing as we're seizing advanced weaponry, I thought it best to be on hand. Ah, there she is. This is the place, but where is the enemy? Sir, over there! Send in the Reaper. Let us make an example of these insurgents. Alright, I'm not worried about the Reaper right now. I'm just gonna take out the, uh... The small fry. Though it looks like that Reaper is on me. You guys. Oh, wrong. Alright, level 42. Cohort Hoplomachus. Now we need to down the Reaper. It definitely seems interested in me. Alright, some more of these guys. Oh, Medicus. Don't want him kicking around. That's the trick. Uh, what's it talking about? All right, there we are. At last, our very own suit of Magitek armor. Hmm. Not wishing to look a gift chocobo in the beak, it does seem rather the worse for wear, doesn't it? Biggs, Wedge, what's your honest assessment? Well, there's the fact that she's smoking, of course. But looking past that, I'd say she was structurally sound. Hmm, I don't like the way these legs are buckled. I hate to say this, but the servo mechanism may be damaged. Eh, but aren't those things protected by elm-thick armor plate? They are, yes. It's odd. The casing doesn't seem to have taken a blow. I suspect we're dealing with a faulty part. Well, whatever it is we're dealing with, we're not resting till it's fixed. Not one wink of sleep. You got that, Wedge. 
Um, cart chocobo. I heard that. Uh, a hall has been set aside for our use in Reverend's Toll. That's where we'll carry out the repairs. Look for us there, Oyami. Yeah, perhaps we were a little too rough on it. Alright, so let's head back to Revenant's Toll. And have a chat with Sid and Biggs and Wedge. And see what we need to do next to get the Magitek armor repaired. So that it'll pass inspection. Alright, here's Slaff Born. The Magitek armor? Said the others took it inside. Go in and join them. Alright, Sid. We've now had time to take a closer look at the Reaper. Our preliminary diagnosis was correct. She's structurally sound, but her servo mechanism is faulty. You needn't worry, though. Biggs and Wedge will see her restored to her former glory in no time at all. Give those two something to mend, and they will think of naught else till the job's done. It is a marvelous thing to behold, provided you remind them to visit the privy. Alright. What's next? Every little thing she does is Magitek. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sid would have you assist in the repair of the Magitek armor. Alright, the repairs are proceeding in space, it, or a pace. It shouldn't be long now before Biggs and Wedge complete their work. There is, however, one small problem. As you may recall, the Machina's servo mechanism was discovered to be faulty. Wedge has subsequently ascertained that the Magitek core, which drives it, is worn beyond use. Such cores are rather fragile devices which must be replaced at regular intervals. Thanks to the negligence of our Imperial colleagues, however, the one used in this Reaper was long overdue. Alas, we do not have access to a ready replacement here in Mordona, but all is not lost. Wedge thinks he may have identified an alternative solution. Go and see him, would you? He'll explain the details to you. Alright, Wedge. As I believe the Chief has already informed you, the Magitek core is worn beyond use. We need to find a replacement. I thought about having you appropriate more Reapers, but even if the Dunderhead maintenance engineers of Castrum Sentry had remembered to replace their cores, we wouldn't risk arousing Imperial suspicion. But do not despair, for I believe there is a solution. To substitute the Magitek core with a Mammoth Heart. In case you don't know, a Mammoth Heart can be used to grant sentience to an automaton. By my reckoning, such a device should be more than capable of regulating the armor's servo mechanism. We'll just need to make some minor modifications to the housing unit. I've already placed an order for our first rate Mammoth Heart with the Goldsmith's Guild. All that remains is for someone to go to Ulda and collect it. Oh, and to pay for it. <clears throat> Did I mention how much they cost? No? Well, they typically cost something in the order of... Um, I hope you don't mind footing the bill. It's for a good cause. Okay. Okay, I guess I will pay for it. Alright. Speak with Serendipity at the Goldsmith's Guild. Again, that's in Thetaland, that's in Ulda. Free teleport. Better not send me back too much.
All right, Goldsmith Guild. There should be an Ethernet node there. All right. Serendipity. Let's have a chat. Hello there. Come to collect a mammoth heart, you say? Then you must be here on behalf of Garland Ironworks. I've taken the liberty of picking the fine example we have. A heart fit for a prince among mammoths. Payment? Well, that won't be necessary. The heart is for Master Alphino's personal use, after all. He notified us a short while ago that his servant would be coming to collect it. Tender in years though he may be, Master Alphino has been a benefactor of ours since my predecessor's time. The Goldsmith's Guild wouldn't dream of charging him. But here is the Mammoth Heart. May it serve you well. Oh, and please do pass on my compliments to your master. Servant? Really? Okay. We'll have to have a chat with Alphino. Alright. Deliver the Mammoth Heart to beg... To Wedge and Sid's workshop. All right. So I'll talk to Slathmorn here. I want to go in, it hardly needs saying, but try not to be seen. All right, Wedge. Do you have the Mammoth Heart? I can't wait to see if it works. Here it is. Hurrah! Thank you so much. But this... This is magnificent. It must have cost an emperor's ransom. Free of charge, courtesy of Alphino. Coming from an influential family certainly has its advantages. But without further ado, let's give it a try. I've already modified the housing unit, so it should slot right in. There, she's ready. Magitek armor, engage. Or not. <laughs> she just needs a loving tap, I'll wager. Yes, she's... she's alive! Let's take her outside and put her through her paces. Naomi, would you care to do the honors? Alright. Magitech Reaper. Hop into the pilot seat. We'll begin as soon as you're ready. First, I'd like you to try climbing that tangle of crystals yonder. As far up as you can go, have you please? Oh, and if for some reason you need to dismount, simply come back here and we'll start again. Alright. Where are we headed? Oh, we're climbing up to the top of the, the crystal formation again. And man, could there be more Nixes? Oh, it's because there's a fate here for the next 12 and a half minutes. Oh, lovely. So, I'm going to 
have to try and sneak through here. I need that one Nyx to turn around. Unfortunately, there we go. Oh. Alright, no anom anomalous movements evident from either leg. Good. Next, jump back down and then sprint more as quick as you can. My pleasure. Oh, do I still have to do that because I got attacked? Alright. Hold on, let me just pause the recording and then I, once I can do this because of the fate, once the fate clears out, I'll be back in a minute. Alright, back. I actually had to fight the fate mobs to get them to go away faster, so I took care of that. And, you know, if you're wondering why I didn't just fight them in the first place, it's because... Once, because they're fate mobs, they respawn as fast as you can kill them. So once you're engaged, um, there's be no, like, killing them, go getting my armor and then getting it. Because I they would be respawned as soon as I came back. Alright. So we're back to no anomalous, anomalous movements evident from either leg. Alright, we want to jump back down and sprint north. Alright, there we go. Dismount because I'm gonna have to start this over again. All right, good. And reset. All right, leg joints absorbing all impact without incident. Excellent. Please make your way back, Hayami. All right, good. I don't know why they couldn't just instance this to avoid this problem. All right, the torso remains stable during vigorous motion. Excellent, and that concludes our test. Thank you for your cooperation. All right, Wedge. Here is a summary of my findings. The drivetrain is in sound condition. With some fine tuning, we can expect a noticeable improvement in performance. As for the servo mechanism, I'm afraid it's not nearly as responsive as it should be. I'm at a loss to explain why. The Mammoth Heart is in pristine condition and should be installed correctly. Perhaps its inner workings are simply too different to operate harmoniously with the armor's other mechanisms. Whereas Magitek cores serve only to conduct impulses, Mammoth, Mammoth Hearts enable Automata to process the information collected by their sensors as feel feelings. Maybe she just doesn't feel like part of the team. In which case, we should all do our best to make her feel welcome. Okay. We can, uh... Use the welcome emote. Click. Extend the Magitek armor a warm welcome. Alright. Well, I think we're gonna go ahead... And end this episode here. We need to do something with Biggs. But that looks like it's going to be an instance. And we're kind of at the end of the episode here. So we'll work on that when we come back. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you next time.